Hello everyone, Brian here. I hope that you're having a great day because today we're going to be covering the goddess Nua. Some facts about her and her stories, of course. If you enjoy the video, go ahead and leave a like on that like button and subscribe to the channel for more content like this if you're new. And without any further ado, let's get into the video. So, Nua is said to have the upper body of a beautiful woman and the lower body of a snake or fish. Some myths even say that she's human, whilst others say that she only had the head of a human, and the rest of her body was quite sneaky. Some even say that she's some human-snail hybrid, but as Hyres didn't want to put that into the game, let's just assume that Nuar's real look isn't too much different from, you know, us. You'll know why I say that soon enough. Our goddess at hand also goes by Nua, Nuqua, Nuqua, and A nice chap who goes by Pangu created the universe and a small planet that we know to be Earth, which was filled with mud and full of incredibly special animals. One day, Nuar realized that she was alone with no one to hang with, and this disturbed her greatly. So she happened upon a pool of mud and decided to give life to some copies of herself. There were not many different choices of material at Nuar's disposal, but among the muds, there were black mud, brown mud, and even yellow muds. Yes, I said Nuar's lower half was snaky, but as we all know, we don't slip around, and jumping is cool. But also we can fall over awfully, which is also cool, I hear. Nuar decided that we were not worthy of sneaky feet. She created many figures with her own bare hands, and with her own conscious minds, these beings populated the earth. Whilst this was all well and good, the earth could never be truly populated at this rate, and so, instead of carefully constructing each new entry into the world by hand, she instead muddied some rope before shooting off droplets of mud in many directions all over the planet. The tiny droplets became human beings, but were different from those constructed by hand. You see, the original human beings were rich and wealthy, whilst those who formed the droplets were poorer and less powerful, and were used as grunt labor force. Nua didn't just make us, but she also invented the class system, and is thanked for sex and marriage. Admit it, she just got moved up a spot on your favorite gods list. Now she won't become a crazy supervillain who flings mud at her enemies like some crazy cat lady. Sang Huan, or the legendary three sovereigns, were renowned for providing us with invaluable skills and living guides. Nuar's wife, Nuar's husband, Fu Jing, granted us all fishing, farming, and the ability to write as well as pets. Everyone loves pets, so by extension, this chap is also worming his way into your heart now, isn't he? I've already covered Nuar's interactions with King Zhou in Daji's Law video, being that the king highly offended the goddess, and then she got back at him by bringing his kingdom, his position as ruler, and all of his nice stuff by tainting his future wife. It's a cool story. You should check out the video if you haven't already. Self-promotion aside, though, Nuar is also one of the many children of the Jade Emperor, as we know how he shot down a bunch of them, leaving one alive as the current son, Fu Xing, her husband, was her brother according to some, and according to others, he lived for around 197 years before joining Nuwa in heaven, and he was also the first ruler of mankind. Nuwa did a little more than just create us, but don't misunderstand me, I am grateful for, you know, her exploits and all of that, but she did a lot more. You see, a dragon, Gong Gong, with a metric ton of pride, decided to challenge the god of fire, Zurong, after bickering with the god for a bit. And by a bit, I mean god knows how long they're actually arguing for. The bout lasted for days, and come its end, Zurong returned to the heavens with honor and victory, whilst our dragon friend, not so much. Needless to say, Gong Gong was pretty salty about his loss, and in his shame, slammed his head against a pillar of heaven, hoping to kill himself. He succeeded, because, you know, pillar of heaven, but also 
was still a decently powerful being and tore a massive hole in the sky, initiating a great flood that ravaged the earth quite easily. No one else but Nua would right this wrong by taking shiny coloured stones from a riverbank and then fashioning them into materials which she would use to patch the hole in the sky. The heavens were still broken, forcing Nua to slay an innocent giant turtle and use its legs to balance the heavens, replacing the broken pillar. The first human beings, Nu and Gua, were brother and sisters who were promised to each other, but their union was abandoned when the smoke sacrifice remained unattended to. Nua is also said to have defeated an oxen king by skillfully slipping a rope between its nostrils before then exploiting the enemy's large horns and ears to take him down. During the second month of the lunar year, people may give sacrifices to Nua in order to find love. After saving mankind from certain doom, Nua is said to have rode off toward the heavens or have been transformed into countless fairies upon dying. And that's about everything I have for Nua. Hopefully you enjoyed this one. If you did, go ahead and show the video some support by leaving a like. And if you're new to the channel, why not subscribe for more? If you have an idea for who the next god after Bologna should be, then go ahead and leave a request in the comment section below. And yes, the next god will be Bologna. That should be on Friday. So, until then, have a very good day. I've been Prime, and I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.